Hey friends, it's Shane from HowToWrench.com and in today's video I'm going to talk about why and when it's dangerous to use these old traditional uh, just put it on battery charger uh, on your smaller uh, batteries. I don't want to limit this to motorcycles. This is ATVs, UTVs, uh, small engine equipment, you name it. But if this interests you and you want to see how hot this battery is right now with this traditional charger and how dangerous it is if I were to just walk away from this, stay tuned. Hey, what are you doing? Have you hit that subscribe button, that notification bell? You're going to be missing out on videos and free prizes and raffles we have coming up. All right, here we are. We're back at the charger. And first thing I want to show you is this battery. It's out of one of my older Ducatis and uh, 16 ALA2, so that means 16 amp hour. And we'll go ahead and pull up the instructions for charging a battery like this. Yuasa has some great charts. They're all very similar, but check out what we see in this chart for how we should actually charge this battery. All right, I wanted to show you here uh, just some great information. Probably the most I've ever learned about batteries has been from uh, Yuasa. Just fantastic information I used at the college. But they have on their website all kinds of resources, questions on whether it's a... Uh, you know, an AGM battery or conventional and so on. So if you're looking to get really good information, here it is. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly show you uh, inside this resources, there's this uh, UASA application guide. And what we've got here is just a, a basically a, a battery manual, if you will. And I went ahead and already kind of forwarded on to page 45, if you will, that talks about um, charging. And they're going to go through and talk about well-ventilated and so on and so on. And as you can kind of see from right here, there's the general rule of thumb that I kind of just went from memory where it's the battery's amp hour rating. Uh, you divide that by 10. So the example here, they have 14. So you should use a 1.4 amp charger uh, to come up with how many amps you should use. But they also have this uh, chart here. And what we got here is its current state of charge and what type of charger and then the amperages along here so you can kind of see just an in-between YB would be your conventional YTX or the maintenance free and, and once again there's specific charts that you can find within this manual that will tell you but I'm just giving you some high level information here right now but as we go along here you can see your trickle charger how long it would take a 14 amp hour battery that's at 75 percent charge should take 18 hours for that to be fully charged with a trickle charger. So that's obviously why it takes so long to uh, make it happen. Then here's one that's a taper charge. And then here's a constant charge of just one amp. One amp at 75% should take about four hours. So you can imagine if we were sticking that six amps for an hour in there, it gets pretty hot. There's just uh, sometimes that trick of trying to, you know, trick the smart chargers and get it to you know, come back to life uh, just doesn't work and it can be really dangerous. So this is the right way to do it. How not to get yourself into trouble is use the chart, find out how much uh, you, you know, charge you have. You can see our other videos. Like I said, I got links to those below on how to load test a battery and then not get yourself into trouble. As you can see, we have this charger and it is literally just honking along. It's a 6 or 12 volt. There's no adjustment. This battery I, charger I've had since I was, I'm 46. I've had this thing since I was 16. This, uh, this thing's honking along here at what? Uh, 5, 6, 7, 7 and a half, 8 amps roughly. And it's actually come down and that's normal. What'll happen is it'll burp. It'll just crank wide open. And then as the battery charges, it won't uh, have so much resistance and that amperage will go down. Like a lot of times I'll actually see this start to just, you know, get closer to, you know, just an amp or so when I'm charging it on a, a bigger traditional battery. But man, this is the thing I've been telling people for years, like don't put a charger on and walk away and like go home for the night. Okay. Don't do that. So I'm putting this on here. I've already tried like my my traditional smart chargers, if you will. I've got this one. I've got a, uh, let's see what, here it is. I got an Optimate. That I love these, by the way. These are really cool. And I like this guy too, so not being partial. But anyway, I, I've tried those and it just keeps coming back. And like on the Optimate, it'll literally say, 
um, it's trying to save it. It goes in the save mode, but this battery is just beyond. But it, when you get done, it just gets done saying weak. And then the very first load I put on it, blah, it just tanks. So if you haven't seen my other videos, uh, make sure and check those out about load testing batteries and so on. But this one is just really kind of like one of those, hey, FYI, you're really looking to have a fire, to have a problem, or have a really bad day. And uh, I'll tell you, the story that I experienced in my early 20s was I had a neighbor who had a big, you know, uh, Morton building, if you will, full of tractors and forklifts, kept his dog in there, whatnot. Uh, poor old boy was in his 80s, and he was used to just throwing a battery charger on his forklift, and, you know, it, it didn't shut off. It had an automatic shut off. It didn't shut off one night. It burned down his whole garage with his dog in there. And I remember I was only 20 some years old and it really impacted me like, whoa, nobody ever told me to shut him off. Like that's really dangerous. <coughs> I could tell you right now, another thing, just stand here is I can smell and sense the, the battery acid in the air right now. So I'm in a really well ventilated area, but I can, sense that maybe i'm not ventilated enough but uh this is another thing why you wouldn't want to do this in a small garage or in a small workspace because a spark could create a big problem there could be you know this could be a really bad day but check out this battery right now how hot it is i'm gonna go ahead and just test it now now they've shut it off for a little bit holy smokes it's a hundred and ninety degrees fahrenheit I, I came in here to check on it, and one thing I noticed is this was honking along, and I looked at my meter. This had been on here. Uh, I believe I had it set for two hours. I'm going to go ahead and turn it off, tell you the truth. I had it set on here for two hours, and it was down to like an hour. And in an hour, I was only at 12.2 volts, and that should be your clue. you got to understand batteries. Uh, if, if I haven't spiked that up to where it gets into that you know, 12.6 you know, even even 12, 4, 12, 6 range, there's there's something going on that's probably not stable and just gets to be plain dangerous. But you'd see as I shut the charger off, I'm only at you know under 10 volts, which means there's a bad cell. So on a 12 volt battery, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, it's actually 2.1, 4.2. Each one of those is worth 2.1 volts. So to only be at 10 here, that, that just tells me there ain't no save in this. I've tried with the well, uh, with the smart chargers, I've done everything I can and it's just no good. Anything else I do to charge this or mess with this is just a risk. I'm just looking for a fire. I'm looking for trouble and it's going to be a bad day. I'm going to tell you, it's been a long time since I've seen a battery get that hot. And like I said, when I went up here just to, just to touch it, I was like, woo, dang it, shut it off. Game over. Don't mess with it. All right, my friends, there you have it. Uh, we love doing this safety stuff as much as anything else. So if you have any tips uh, about charging batteries, favorite batteries, favorite chargers, charging tips, storage tips, any of that stuff, you know, our community loves reading the comments below. I love reading them. I learn from them at times too. And uh, I want to encourage you to share any links or, or anything that you know that relates to this topic. Uh, uh, here at HowToWrench.com, we love our community with the comments. So we are going to get back at it. I am going to need to get a new battery for the old Ducati. And, uh, you know, we're, we're working on bringing that thing back to life. I'm super excited. Uh, I bought this bike. Uh, maybe you want to see it. Let me uh, run you through the shop and go see this old dog. It's a 1995 900 SS and it's an SP version. The SP version had carbon fiber fenders, had a special uh, triple clamp. Um, I've got all the original bodywork and stuff too, but I really picked this bike up in memory of uh, my little brother. When we were kids, uh, we went to a Ducati dealer and, you know, looked at these and, you know, I said, someday I'm going to have one of these. And uh, you know what? That someday came gosh, a couple years ago, but moving to California and then on to Phoenix and everything, I just really haven't had time to pursue it. So it's on a, a real big bucket list of mine to uh, to do some cool stuff too. I even have a uh, just a brand new set of takeoff uh, Marchesini wheels for it back here. I'm super stoked to, uh, to mount up, make this thing look pretty cool. How sick are those going to be? Hey, let's get a little side shot of this guy. That thing is just going to be too much fun, but 
All right, I'm yapping away just because I'm alone and bored in this COVID thing. So hope uh, hope you're all being safe and uh, doing cool things. So anyway, if you haven't done so yet, make sure and like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Our merch links are below. Our, our donation links are below. And uh, we can't thank you enough for all the support, for all this free content we make for you. But as always, make it a great day and keep wrenching.